Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us here for First News at Krem on at four o'clock. We want to get right to our top coronavirus headlines at this hour. We know that help is now on the way. There is a $2.2 trillion stimulus package to help Americans through this coronavirus pandemic. It has now been officially signed by the president. It, by the way, is the single largest spending bill in U.S. history. I've never signed anything with a T on it. <laughs> So the House passed that relief package earlier today with overwhelming bipartisan support. It will now pump hundreds of billions of dollars into the economy to help workers, businesses and hospitals. So if you are an individual who earns $75,000 or less, you will get a payment of about $1,200. If you are a married or perhaps a couple who makes $150,000 or less, you will receive $2,400 and an additional $500 per child. But I want to thank Republicans and Democrats for coming together, setting aside their differences and putting America first. The president also confirming today that he has enacted the Defense Production Act to compel General Motors now to make more ventilators. He has also added that he is still assessing different ways to get parts of the country back to work, but his top health officials say the data is what's going to determine that decision. Okay, so what does all of this mean for Washington state? Washington will receive $150 billion, $2.9 billion will be going toward the state coronavirus relief fund. The state will get a child care development block grant, which is for counties and cities, to rapidly respond to the economic and housing impacts. Low income energy assistance programs and education stabilization programs also will benefit. And tens of thousands of workers at the Hanford nuclear site out in the Tri-Cities will continue to receive pay despite being unable to work from home right now. And Washington Governor Jay Inslee issued a statement today following the president's signature. He says, quote, our state welcomes this critically needed support as we continue to face down an unprecedented crisis. However, we also know it is not enough. He says there is no question more help will be needed in the coming months to address the harsh economic realities of this moment. The bill does not solve those longer term challenges. Now, the president says he will categorize different parts of the country as high risk, medium risk or low risk, all in an effort to encourage local leaders to then reopen businesses. And he has been very open about the idea of having the nation opened up and ready to go by Easter, now 16 days away. Oh, I would say by Easter, we'll have uh, a recommendation and maybe before Easter and uh, at the end of the 15th day, uh, or even during the 15th day, I think we'll have some kind of a recommendation, but our country wants to get back to work, Steve. Now, local health experts disagree with the president, saying that life will not be able to return to normal within the next two weeks. It's unrealistic to say that we're going to be back to normal by Easter at this point. That is Dr. Lutz, the health officer here in Spokane for Spokane Regional Health. He explained that local health experts will recommend people stay home as long as it takes to see a decrease in cases. However, he also said we will likely see cases continuing to rise for several more weeks. And new numbers just coming in right now. 83 confirmed cases of coronavirus now in Spokane County. There are 42 in Grant County and nearly 1,800 in King County. Statewide, you can see there at the bottom, now 3,700 cases. It's nearly 500 more cases than yesterday. Statewide, we now have 175 deaths. In Idaho, the death toll also rose again to four now. Idaho, as you can see, has 203 confirmed cases, 11 just in the Panhandle area. New this afternoon, Seattle researchers say the coronavirus deaths in Washington couldn't, may not peak until mid-April. The Institute for Health Metrics and Evaluation at UW says the deaths could persist well into July even if people are still practicing social distancing and taking precautions. By August, nearly 1,500 people in Washington state, they say, could die from the coronavirus. And those cases do continue to rise here in Spokane County, but the hospitals say we are still at very manageable levels. The daily occurrence rate at many Spokane area hospitals lower right now, although leaders here in the industry are preparing for the possibility of a surge in patients. 
Multicare Health System also further restricting visitors to its hospital amid these coronavirus concerns. The Family Birth Center is now only going to allow one visitor per 24 hours. Multicare Deaconess Hospital's natal intensive care, neonatal intensive care unit, they're now allowed two visitors in 24 hours, but they will be screened at the entrance. Those limitations apply at all multi-care hospital facilities until further notice. As unemployment rates continue to grow, we now have a growing list of jobs in the Washington state area that are still hiring. We have Safeway, Albertsons, Fred Meyer, Walmart, all now looking for employees and food delivery services like Postmates and Uber Eats also looking for a lot of drivers. Amazon and Domino's also hiring. Marijuana has been classified as an essential service under both agriculture and food. And those positions are constantly changing, so anyone seeking employment in that sector could also search the appropriate job and employment categories. In Spokane, uh, Prestige Care now looking for hospitality aides and personal care attendants. For a complete list of those jobs and all of those that are hiring, just go to creme.com. In Idaho, Governor Brad Little signed two executive orders today aimed at increasing funding that Idaho has available to fight the coronavirus. To bolster the money available for Idaho's direct response to coronavirus, I will be signing an executive order directing the transfer of $39.3 million from the Tax Relief, Re Relief Fund to the Disaster Emergency Account. So the first order allows for more access to buy testing kits, lab supplies, personal protective equipment for healthcare workers, and hazard pay for essential services like childcare. In a second executive order, the governor asked all state agencies to reduce spending for the year by 1%. Healthcare agencies exempted from that order. The governor said he did not anticipate any layoffs, though, of state employees or reduction in services as a re result of these cutbacks. New at four, Washington State Public Schools will now be implementing a new sex education curriculum for all grades K through 12. Governor Inslee signed that into law today. That's what you're seeing right now. And it means sex ed will now be taught to students as young as five. Only in age appropriate materials, though. Supporters say it's going to actually be catered to each child's age. So during all this stress right now, there is so much good happening in our community and we want to focus on that. So take a look at all the smiling faces out at Longfellow Elementary this morning. Every family there got a meal from Red Rock Catering. As Creme 2's Tim Pham tells us, that business wanted to make sure every child has a meal, even on the weekends. It comes in a box and it's filled with love. Life has been turned upside down for all of us. The kiddos are no exception. So I really believe that our community, our Longfellow community, is benefiting from those meals. We've told you about the generosity of our community. This act of kindness is no different, but the goal is to make sure no child goes hungry, no matter what day of the week. Just that reminder for us to that, you know, what we're doing is making a huge, positive, huge impact on them. It's why Red Rock Catering is stepping up to do their part at Longfellow Elementary School. They talked about these weekend meals that they wanted to produce for the kids to take home with them that give them uh, more than uh, a little of, uh, snack over the weekend. More than half of Spokane Public School students are on free or reduced lunch, and that's during the school year. Now with families out of work and resources running thin, this box full of kindness means so much. It's been a good Nice thing for us. Many hands can make a big difference. It's what makes us inland together. Reporting in Spokane, I'm Tim Pham, Creme 2 News. And again, those are the stories that we love. So if you know of other stories like that, the inland together concept, please do let us know. You can email us here. You can also go onto our Facebook and Twitter pages. So as you know, we have been practicing social distancing here at Cram. That means Tom Sherry reporting from his home today, but he's of course keeping an eye on the weekend forecast, Tom.
Hey, Whitney, here we are. We're out on the, the front. We're out on the front porch right now. And uh, gosh, you know, it's a little cool, but it's dry here so far uh, across the area. Uh, take a look at this. You know, since I've been home, it's all about doing the honey-do list. You see the yard right there? Got the beds all nicely raked out, as you can see. Uh, even did the lawnmower, even though it didn't really need it. You know, it was more like just to pick up the stuff uh, that was actually on the lawn. And uh, while I've been out here on the uh, uh, on the porch here, I my my computer here to zoom into this. Would you show me this here, Jeff? You see it? It says reconnecting. So just before you toss to me, uh, we lost our signal there. So if you don't mind, I'd like to do it old school for you, Whitney, and tell you that here we go. We're going to look for a few showers on Saturday. Not many, but a few. It'll be a bit on the windy side with gusts up to 20 miles an hour. We'll look for high temperatures in the low 50s, 52, 53, for both Saturday and Sunday. Yeah, go ahead and try that if you can, but I don't know if, it'll, if it will do that. Uh, is that the Doppler radar there? Are we showing that there? My good friend at the uh, station is... Uh, Oh, there. Okay, we well, can see the current radar. Okay, let's go that way then. So you see the radar that is occurring. Uh, that is the rain. Most of it is to in eastern Washington, northern Idaho. No rain here on the South Hill where I'm located. About a mile away, or about four miles away from the lovely Whitney Ward and the mighty Krem2 uh, television studios and Radio Ranch. Uh, again, you look at that, uh, again, very close view of the radar. Again, you can see where the showers are occurring. So temperature-wise, when we look around the region, you can see temps are, uh, you know, in the 40s right now. I think we've got them. Are we going to be able to show that to you folks? Uh, Michael, are you going to be able to help me out back there? Oh, okay. We just have the radar. Okay. So... Oh, it's, then this is what we want to talk about. So let's go back to the, uh, the other uh, situation I was talking about. Uh, did I mention here? Uh, did I mention that? It says reconnecting right there. <laughs> hey, it's COVID time. What else could go wrong? <laughs> Anyway, the point is, folks, we're looking for highs in the low 50s over the weekend. Chance of showers on Saturday, much better chance of rain occurring and windy conditions on Sunday. We'll get this together. We'll have a look at your seven-day forecast coming up in a few minutes. Back to you, Whitney. Thanks, Tom. Ever the professional, you just got to love technology at a time like this. <laughs> All right, a wholesale produce seller here in the area changing up their business model right now just to stay afloat after the closure of so many local restaurants. People, though, are loving the changes. They're buying huge bags of potatoes, stir fry and other vegetables, all at prices that are pretty tough to beat. Sweet. So here's three bags of hash runs. Perfect. Kyle Duncan just started work at Duncan Produce in Spokane Valley. Yeah, of course. After Governor Inslee closed all restaurants, Kyle lost his job. Oh gosh darn. Then my brother was nice enough to be like, hey, like if you want some more hours, like you can come help out. So now he's doing good. Hey Casey, do we have red onions? But he's lucky this job with Dunkin' Produce even exists. We normally sell to the restaurants. So when the restaurants closed. Our business dropped by over 70%. So last week, owner Casey Duncan was cutting all of his workers' hours. It was pretty tough, but then later that afternoon, I come up with this idea. And the next day I told them they're going to have to be working overtime. That idea? So we only have the potato products and onions right now. Now Duncan Produce is selling their huge bags of veggies to normal people instead of just restaurants. And business took off. We have hundreds of people every day coming. Okay. Lining up in their cars and letting the employees do the work. Yeah. It's a win-win because people like us get pounds of produce for super cheap. Very discounted. And Casey Duncan was able to hire some family members who have lost their jobs. I mean, take a look at this line. They're doing so well that Casey says even after the coronavirus orders are all over, they're going to keep selling to regular people. In Spokane, Nicole Hernandez, Krem 2 News.